Uh, hello everyone and welcome to Real Time with NEPCON China 2018. I'm Stephen Lasmarias and joining me today is Michael Goldsmith of Thermaltronics. Um, Michael, thank you very much for joining us today. So, uh, maybe first Michael, can you uh, please tell us more about Thermaltronics? I, yeah. yeah. Well, Thermaltronics is probably relatively new to the market in that we're only this year celebrating our 10th year anniversary. Okay. However, it's uh, manned by some very experienced older people like me. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's uh, we have a, a depth of experience which is most unusual in a young company, mm -hmm. and I think this uh, is helping us to penetrate the markets that we're, we're working in throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So you're based in the U.S. Uh, our main uh, office is in the U.S. in Long Island, but our factory is in Beijing in a, a science park, mm -hmm. and we have offices in Hong Kong. Uh, Australia, Europe, and Europe. Mm -hmm. All right. So, please, uh, can you please tell us some of the uh, uh, products from the company? Well, the prime uh, product range is uh, soldering equipment, basically okay. hand soldering equipment, using a principle called Curie Point. Curie Point. Okay. Uh, Curie is a process by which you can control temperature very, very accurately. All right. And in doing so, you get no overshoot of temperature mm -hmm. when you're doing hand soldering. And you don't need any calibration. Right. Uh, it's it's basically the most superb way to manage soldering without having to worry about dials and LCD displays, because it works on a on a very different principle than a thermocouple and a dial where you adjust temperature. All right. Okay. So, um, Michael, when we talk about uh, hand soldering, uh, definitely, uh, despite all the uh, advancements uh, in the soldering equipment. Uh, somehow it still depends on the, the skill of the workers, right? Very, very much. And despite all the automation that's going on today, mm -hmm. there is still a huge amount of rework taking place. Uh, as an example, we heard today there's several companies that are making cameras and iPhones okay. where there is a 1% fault on the camera assembly okay. process. And that's an awful lot when you're making a phone. Mm -hmm. So, and that is now being reworked by hand. Wow, Un unbelievable! Mm -hmm. But it, it is that. But I don't think that if we, as a company, were relying on hand soldering, yeah. it wouldn't be a gross factor. You can take market share for sure, right? But you can only take market share for so long. Mm -hmm. And certainly, hand soldering as a process mm -hmm. is not as prevalent as it was 15, 20 years ago, for sure. So what do you think should be the next step in this uh, process? I mean, what the next evolution, so to speak, of hand soldering? Well, uh, again, if you look around the exhibition here, there are, there are a lot of solder robots. Mm -hmm. And most of these solder robots are made by companies who in the past have had some involvement with robotics. Right. We've come at this process from a different angle and mm -hmm. developed our own solder robot by thinking about what an operator does, right. not okay. what a robot does. Okay. Because the operator, a skilled operator, is able to solder very efficiently, very effectively, mm -hmm. and time after time. Right. This is what you want to recreate with a robot. Mm -hmm. So I understand uh, you're showcasing uh uh, robotic uh, soldering uh, Yes, we system? In, we mm -hmm. introduced the system first at uh, Productronica mm -hmm. in 2017. Okay. And we have probably systems placed in almost all the major countries in the world now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's different to the other soldering robots in that most, if not all, soldering robots work on a single axis yeah. with the solder feeder and the solder tip on that same axis. Right. That doesn't replicate a human being. That's right. Because a human being, when they solder, uses one hand for the soldering iron and the other hand for the solder wire. That's right. So our system has two heads. Mm -hmm. One which feeds the solder wire, okay. and one which has the soldering tip. And they both move independently of the other. Mm -hmm. In addition, if you're doing soldering by hand, and you want to solder a point in front of you, yeah. and then a point further away, you don't walk around the table to solder the other side, you turn the board around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our system has a 360 degree rotatable base, mm -hmm. so you can rotate the board into the right position to do the hand soldering process. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like a, a good solution in the market. 
Uh, we believe that we've advanced the process mm -hmm. a little bit more than anybody else because we've also incorporated things like fiducial marks. Yep. Most of the other systems use a teach and learn process. Mm -hmm. We have an application program using fiducial marks, so yep. our accuracy is much, much better. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we use a laser height control mechanism. What? So we have dynamic laser height control for the uh, soldering process. In the event there's any warpage in the board, mm -hmm. or there's some slight uh, change in the, in the position of a component, yep. because the laser is going ahead of the soldering joint, it's dynamically adjusting for any alterations that might be necessary. Right. We also use vision and mapping. Uh -huh. So, in a way, you can say we've incorporated a lot of the automation that's used in a SMT pick and place machine right. into a soldering robot. Mm -hmm. Again, on the basis of trying to replicate what the human being would be doing. And not yeah. a robot uh, person. Yes, exactly, not exactly. Right. And I think probably one of the other important things to remember is, again, most of us single head soldering robots mm -hmm feed the solder wire to the tip. Yeah. That is not an IPC approved process. Oh, okay. Usually you go to the solder joint mm -hmm. and bring the solder wire to the joint to right. reflow. Yeah. We can do either. If you want to bring it to the tip and pre-tin it, we can do that. Yep. But because we have two axes, yeah. we can bring the tip to the solder joint mm -hmm. and then bring the wire to do the reflow process. Right. So we're meeting the IPC standard. And uh, it's uh, an automatic uh, system. Oh yes, it's fully yeah. automatic, uh, and the software is very, very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And again, because it's a gradually evolving technology, mm -hmm. all robotics are still gradually evolving. We give free software upgrade for the lifetime of the machine, mm -hmm. because in reality, most of your good ideas come right. from your customers. Mm -hmm. you know, right. they're, they're using the machine all day long, yep. so they experience things which you don't necessarily experience when you're building or testing a machine. Mm. Definitely this uh, robot will, well, soldering robot will lend itself perfectly uh, in an automation, you know, an, a fully automated line, right? Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Our initial version is a benchtop unit, mm -hmm. but we are also working on an inline version, right? Uh, because this is the way industry is going, obviously. Yeah. Um, so we will be able to offer two options because mm -hmm. not all applications are suited to inline. Mm -hmm. Some are best done offline. That's right. So we are able to offer both, basically. Mm -hmm. Right, Michael. Uh, so we are here in China uh, for your uh, uh, robotic uh, soldering system. Um, what are the opportunities you're seeing in this uh, market? Uh, I would say at the moment we've seen some very interesting specialized applications, particularly here actually in aerospace. Uh -huh, okay. um, but we have the ability to cross a broad spectrum of opportunities, particularly uh, in regard to a multiple board pattern, right. where, you, where you have wafers you can break off. Yeah. Typically with a standard robot, you have, when you do teach and learn, you have to program each yeah. board. With ours, we can copy and paste, copy and paste, so it's much, much more efficient. Mm -hmm. And in that respect, we've broadened our application because we can go and look at a, a single board, yeah. or can we look at a, a, a multiple a wafer board or, or any kind of uh, profile like that. So it's, mm -hmm. And we have the ability to come down onto the solder joint and do a little bit of preheat sometimes. So right. I would say the applications are numerous, mm -hmm. <laughs> numerous. Mm -hmm. I think the problem for us is educating the customer to understand the difference between our machine yeah. and everything else that's out there. And how do you plan to do that? Well, we're doing it through advertising, promotion, <laughs> this mm -hmm. process today. Uh -huh. um, we have distribution throughout the world and we've taken the, the step that any of our distribution outlets we do not appoint until we fully approve an operator that's capable of demonstrating and understanding the machine. Exactly. Because if you don't understand and you cannot demonstrate, then you will sell something that's not applicable. That's right. Yeah. And you know, uh, 
he may not be able to differentiate it from uh, exactly whatever exactly. is in the market right now. So it's it's taken a lot of thinking, mm -hmm. and uh, the process itself for us, the mechanical side hasn't been that difficult, right. but getting the software correct that's the hardest part I think, mm -hmm. and it's. I think anybody else coming into the market would need another year or two to catch up with our software at the moment because it's it's really been a, a lot of hard work for two years. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Okay. So um, I have just one question because uh, definitely uh, in the soldering, uh, in hand soldering, right? Uh, so there's a set temperature, and then sometimes I mean, uh, does the uh, operator? Well, that's for hand soldering, but. Um, what I was uh, trying to say is the uh, the intelligence into the uh, uh, robotic soldering. Is it, you know, I mean, it's going to be data driven? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it can be data driven and can be data recorded because one of the, the requirements of Industry 4.0 mm -hmm. is that you have the ability for traceability. Yeah. So we are building into the software the ability to scan the board, record the data, also record operating temperatures and so on. So right. That, so that this, this data uh, can then be downloaded mm -hmm. and used in the event that then there needs to be some follow-up later. That's right. <laughs> so we're basically, <coughs> excuse me, trying to uh, provide the industry 4.0 standard, but from a human hand soldering operation viewpoint, mm -hmm. so that we incorporate all the things that a human can do, mm -hmm. that a robot maybe can do in the future, but cannot right. do 100% today. Exactly. All right, um, Michael. Uh, you know, uh, I think we've covered enough. Um, do you have anything that we have that I have to talk about that you think we should be talking about? Uh, in regard to robotic soldering, or in general? Uh, robotic soldering. And I, I think in robotic soldering, the problem has been in the past that it's been seen as the opportunity to uh, automate a hand soldering process. But the results for many customers have been less than successful, mm -hmm. and the the rate of approval of a, a robotic solder board has not been that great. Okay. So we, we aim to change that. Mm -hmm. So that that's the goal that we have today. It's a. I think we have the equipment, we have the software, and we have now the ability to get this product out and really do a proper robotic soldering job. It just needs an education of the It's an education industry. process, industry. for sure. It's an education of the industry, because everybody thinks that you can have an X, Y, Z mm -hmm. table, yep. stick a soldering iron on the top, and you've got everything worked out. In reality, you have not, because from one board to the next, could be 5% difference. Right. Uh, it could be more solder on the tip this time than last right. time. If you do not calibrate the tip properly, mm. it, from tip to tip, it could be five microns difference. That could make a big problem if you're right. coming across a board and then scraping it. And then the density, uh, the different the density of the boards, yes. component e density. Everything you have to, yeah. to reconsider. But going forward, you know, you talked about the inline version, for example. Going forward, the inline version also will incorporate for us an underboard heater process, mm -hmm. an elevator process that can put it up into the uh, robot to be soldered, right. and then put down again and back onto the conveyor. So it's a well thought out process. Right. Actually. Right. And I think, as you said, very rightly, it's educating the market mm -hmm. to understand what a real soldering robot can do. All right, great. That's, that sounds great, Michael, and uh, good luck uh, in the uh, 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 in the future of uh, we're, we're looking forward to the yeah. challenge and and the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, thank you.